Hi, we're here today at the Holtorf Medical Group with Dr. Holtorf to discuss a condition that's been in the news frequently because uh, football season is right around the corner. The condition is traumatic brain injury. And Dr. Holtorf, I'm under the um, impression that traumatic brain injury can be caused by any sort of blunt force to the head. But the problem that they're seeing is a lot of the long-term effects associated with that. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the problem with traumatic brain injury, pe people think of like a car accident or one big concussion. But we're finding, unfortunately, small concussions for many, many years where a person doesn't seem to be having any problem. All of a sudden, 20 years later, now they have all the, the symptoms and can be anything from physical fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, you know, memory problems, to emotional problems, psychiatric problems. Um, and it just can expand so many different things. So doctors really need to be on the lookout for it. And they'll, they'll diagnose someone with, you know, Alzheimer's or fibromyalgia, or chronic fatigue syndrome, when all along is traumatic brain injury. Wow, okay. So is there a certain, certain time frame in which those symptoms start presenting after the initial occurrence or? Um... And usually the, the bigger the trauma, mm -hmm. the sooner it will, it will basically show itself. Okay. But again, that's the problem is these long-term, you know, chronic concussions, people in sports and skateboards hitting their head, um, and especially football or soccer, it's just constant, you know, basically head bashing. Okay. How would you go about diagnosing traumatic brain injury? And with, with diagnosing, you have to be highly suspicious mm -hmm. um, and really look for it because it can masquerade as many other things. And people get diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, again, fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. and we'll find combining that if they get Lyme disease with traumatic brain injury, they're much worse. So it can make anything else worse as well any bipolar patients, uh, memory problems, mm -hmm. uh, and they can just have chronic pain, weird you know, symptoms, dizziness, mm -hmm. unsteady. It can just be anything. It's, off, it's rarely diagnosed properly. Okay. Is there any sort of blood test or maybe an MRI that can be done for this? Or is it just based yeah, on symptoms? And the problem is oftentimes there's nothing on a standard MRI or CAT scan, mm -hmm. and you do a spec scan to see the difference. But and we're finding all their hormones are generally low, okay. especially growth hormone uh, and also thyroid. But the problem is, and testosterone for men, mm -hmm. uh, actually everything, and cortisol. But they're very hard to detect because it's suppressing the pituitary and hypothalamus. So the normally way that doctors look for, let's say, low thyroid, they look for an increase in TSH mm -hmm. because the problem's the thyroid. The problem's not the thyroid. The problem's the pituitary. So the TSH stays low, hormones are low, but they don't have doctors think... High TSH equals low thyroid, low TSH is high thyroid, but they have low TSH and low thyroid. Okay. Um, same thing with growth hormone. So rarely do doctors you know, even test for growth hormone, which is IGF-1 mm -hmm. and IGF-BP-3, so in insulin-like growth factor 1. Okay. And um, uh, so those are the markers for growth hormone, because growth hormone just pulses throughout the day, okay. so it could be zero. But uh, you know, these need to be addressed, and, and putting back these hormones is the first step and can result in profound improvement. Okay. What about treatments for TBI? And, you know, and there's certain uh, things you can do and, you know, feedback and things like that, but we're finding hormones are the first step. You can't get better unless you replace the hormones because they can't heal. We also have some new treatments uh, such as thymosin beta-4, okay. which exciting studies showing that it actually rejuvenates brain. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, uh, and so a lot of things, and there's a lot of inflammation, actually. Some studies on increasing glutamate, which, especially if someone has a methylation defect, you've probably heard mm -hmm. more about in the news, that you're more likely to get to produce this neurotoxin, glutamate, mm -hmm. which causes nerve degeneration. So uh, we may you know, have some treatments in the future where you take glutamate blockers before you exercise. And so you don't get that uh, excess stimulation that destroys the nerves. And we're using that medication. It's actually only approved for ALS, Lou Gehrig's mm -hmm. disease, um, which is basically degeneration of nerves. But we're finding great results in traumatic brain injury, depression, anxiety. And so now that we're finding more about the, you know, the physiology of the brain, mm -hmm. we're getting much more targeted treatments. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Holtorf. And for more information, please visit holtorfmed.com.